Hello. Hi, is this Susie? Yes, it is. All right, well, let me do the official introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, we are very excited to welcome our featured guest for this evening. She is a singer and an actress and someone who horror movie fans will remember as Brenda from The Hills Have Eyes. We're very excited to welcome Susie Lanier Bramlett. You're on the air with Terry and Tiffany. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. It's a, it's an, uh, a thrill to be here. <laughs> well, you want to know something. It's really great because, you know, we, we do a lot of posting on Facebook and we get comments and we read what other people say. And, you know, one might expect fans to like an actress or a singer or whatever. You have other actors that really like you. Everybody just, just thinks you're the greatest person ever and everybody loves you. What do you test that to? Oh, my gosh. You know, a little bit of kindness goes a long way. Yes, and is. also, having lived so long, I've met a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, it is Suze, S-U-Z-E, Suze. Suze. I mean, you can call me Susie. A lot of people do. But um, for your fans or people that might meet me at a convention, it's Suze. And you know I like that better. I really do. It, it, oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I started a band in the 80s. And I really hated using the name Susan for mm -hmm. a rock band. Yeah. So I just changed it to Suze Lanier, and I was playing all over L.A. and blues clubs everywhere, and Suze just seemed to be a little, sounded hipper to me. So um, anyway, that's, that is Suze Lanier Bramlett. Okay. Do, do you find, like, like with me, for instance, okay, I was aware of your acting career, being a cult movie geek and everything. I was not aware that you were such a great singer, and, and you know, I'm kind of like jaded because I'm like, oh yeah, that's cute, an actor's going to sing, and then I hear your voice, and it knocked me off the chair. Do you find that fans still don't realize sometimes that you sing and they get surprised? Most of them have no idea. Mm. Mo most of my horror fans have no idea that I record and that I sing, but I was, you know, for years I was married to Delaney Bramlett, mm -hmm. who had produced Eric Clapton's first album and he wrote many many uh, hit songs like Superstar and Never Ending Song of Love and Let It Rain with Eric Clapton and so we wrote a lot of music together and so I had this acting career when I met him and so uh, we ended up you know collaborating with music after we uh, became a couple and so you know uh, I've, I've I'm very much in the rock world as much as I'm in the acting world. I mean, it was kind of a relationship made in heaven with him because you both love the blues. And how did you actually get together with him? It's unfortunate he's not with us. I miss him so much. But you guys were really a match made in heaven, weren't you? We really were. You know, I, I met him, uh, uh, enriched my life in ways I would never have guessed, which was that Delaney had seen The Hills Have Eyes at a drive-in when it first came out. Oh. And I went to a nightclub to hear him play because my friend from uh, Texas was in his band, and his wife was a friend of mine, and she said, let's go hear Delaney. And I said, ah, I don't know. I'm tired. I've got to shoot the next day. And uh, I went to the nightclub anyway, and Delaney saw me, and he came down off the stage, and he said, I saw you in The Hills Have Eyes last night. I'm going to marry you. Oh. And I went... Oh yeah, right. You're crazy, <laughs> and and um, and that was the start of the romance. And I got a husband out of the deal, not just a movie. Right. So, so I heard you right in in saying that his wife was a friend of yours. Uh, Daryl Leonard, oh, okay. wife, who was in the band. No, I know Bonnie, but I, you know, uh, I don't, you know, hang out with her or anything. She lives yeah. in Nashville and she has her own career. And they, you know, towards the end. Uh, I mean, they were only married four years, um, and they were separated by 71, right. so uh, we didn't really, you know, hang out too much. I mean, I, I certainly know her, and, and she's very nice, but, you know, we don't have a relationship. Right. right. So I want to ask, I mean, obviously, we're going to go back and talk more about the music, but 
How did you get started? Because it's it's always interesting to hear the different stories of getting started in, in the business. It was much different back then than it is now. I mean, it's one thing to say, you know, I'm going to be an actress. I, I know you were watching like the Miss America pageant or something right. like that. But to actually get it going and, and to start out and, and do some of the things that you've done. I mean, you started out, you know, early television even. I did. You know, I I there was something that was inside of me that never questioned that I would do that. Mm -hmm. But being raised in Dallas, um, my parents thought I was insane for <laughs> thinking I was actually going to be an actor. And uh, I, But one day, I was walking across the park, and they were doing auditions for Winnie the Littlest Witch. I think I was 12. <laughs> and I asked the guy if I could audition, and I got the part of the littlest witch and i won a big acting award that year in dallas and uh so i got the bug from being 12 and then i did of course i went into drama at high school i think it's really important who your teachers are right. and um i happened to have gotten a very good drama teacher mr brock and i won some uh interscholastic league contests and so through that got a radio show in Dallas, and after that, I was ready for New York. <laughs> and right. so, wow. by the time I was 18 or 17, I, I, I was uh, two months short of my 18th birthday. I moved to New York City, and I was bound and determined to do theater. I, I really had no dreams of doing movies at the time. Really, I thought I was not uh, movie material but definitely theater material yeah. and i did a lot a lot of theater in new york and and on the road you know i think it's great so, you did radio i i would assume you probably had the texas accent back then huh well i i was a, a teenage disc jockey and <laughs> so i got to and we actually spin you you know we we actually spinned the record yeah you know or on the records and so I would go you know this song goes out to uh, Jimmy and Kathy and go Wildcats uh, let's talk about the boy from New York City and then you know and then they and do I uh, do uh, you know so then it, wow. it would come up and so I had a little following uh, as a teenage disc jockey in high school so I was never uh, uh, it, it just seemed that one project led to the next, to the next, and as long as I kept the energy in that direction. And I think that's really important, that you have to keep your focus and, and you know, steer it. You, it. It'll happen if you steer it right. correctly. Well, if you ever want to slum it and pull a shift to cult radio, that would, that would work out good. <laughs> I don't know if we pay as good as Wes Craven and them people, but, you know... <laughs> I love radio. Are you kidding? Yeah. I love I, and and then when when you do radio, I mean, you can have your hair and pigtails and overalls yeah. on, and nobody knows what you look like. Like yeah. right now, I have a guy in the back room working on a. I bought a Brent, my first smart TV, and he's in the back setting it up. And you know, um, uh, right now, I wouldn't want anyone to see me. So I love <laughs> the beauty of radio. <laughs> well, I've I've got to ask you, okay. I've always been under the opinion, and you kind of verify that, that the prettiest women in the world are from Texas, and and Aww. you were the prettiest student in Welcome Back, Cotter, and I know your whole thing there, your whole bit was flirting with Gabe Kaplan. Now, I've got to find out, here he is, you know, so much older than your teacher and everything. What was that like for you working with that gang and those people, John Travolta and, and Ron Palillo and all them? I mean, what was that like? Well, it was magical, you know. Um, I uh, Gabe, um, I, I was, everybody was really nice. Marcia Strassman was not wild about me, but other than, than that, oh. you know, I had a really good relationship uh -huh. with um, John and um, Larry mm -hmm. still. I'm still friends with Larry, and I, I was friends with Bobby and Ron up until they passed away. Right. So it, it was, I, I don't see John and uh, you know he's such a big movie star right. I yeah, I'm sure if I if I ran into him he would say hello maybe if he recognized me but um, I, you know I was a pretty tiny back then. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, 
but, you know, he was too. We were younger. But I, I maintained a lifetime friendship with Bobby and Ron and, and Larry. Wow. You know, as far as Gabe Kaplan, I get the impression, you know, he started out as a stand-up comedian. And I know you like comedy and stand-up. But mm-hmm. I, I would imagine he did a lot of improv. I mean, did he stick to the script? or He did stick to the script. Um, what I, my, my biggest thing that I was proud of was doing comedy, and, and they didn't tape back then, and I don't know where I would get copies of the shows, but I was able to work with George, George Carlin oh, doing wow. sketches on Tony Orlando and Dawn and the Rainbow Hour. Tony Orlando and Dawn's ratings were going down, and they decided to incorporate a comedy uh, troupe to do sketches on the show. Yeah. And uh, that was one of my first auditions in Hollywood. And I wrote my own sketch. I was a beauty queen from Texas. And I wrote the comedy sketch myself. I auditioned and got the part, as did George Carlin. And they paired us up together oh, wow. to do many of the sketches. Now, I got a lot of chops from him, yeah. watching him work and uh, working with him. And that, that was a huge blessing, you know. That was great, because he did work off of improv, and he, he would just pull him out of the air. He, he was like Robin Williams in that way. His, his whole know? thing was kind of outspoken and a little cynical and maybe a little bitter. I mean, but honest. honest. Honest, honest, definitely honest. Uh, he would have made a good president, a lot better than the one we have now. Uh, but, yeah, you think? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. in, in real life, when the cameras were not on, was was he kind of... I know most comedians are shy when they're not on. Yeah, he, he was very shy. Uh, I've worked with Richard Lewis, too. And oh, he's yeah. quiet and shy and eccentric. And George was, too. But remember, when George and I did that, he was not the old cranky guy. Yeah, that's you know, right. He was older than me, but he was still young. Yeah. And he still, you know, had stars in his eyes. We both have been asked to audition for Saturday Night Live. Wow. And because we were on a big CBS network show, we both turned it down. Oh. Wow. Which probably was a huge mistake. Yeah, so, well. You know, but you can't go back. I mean, yeah. I, 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 you know, I was advised to stay with the sure thing because this was the first season of Saturday Night Live and nobody knew if it would go or not. Nobody right. knew if it would be a hit or not. Oof. And so, and they weren't paying well. And you had to go to New York. And so I was already uh, contracted to do a comedy show at CBS, you know. So, um, it, it, you know, things happen the way they're supposed to. But, um uh, yeah, but we both were invited to do that. You know, a big fan of uh, Tony Orlando and Dawn, and, and you are definitely right about the ratings, and they try to do different things to spice it up. You know, I hear these stories all the time uh, that the girls did not get along with Tony, that Tony was nothing but a damn egomaniac. Have you, did you notice, like, any tension? Uh, yeah, but the thing is, you know, back then, there were so you know, it was Hollywood in the yeah. 70s. And do I need to say more? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think so. I don't think so. But I, I've got to tell I'm you. Not, I'm not innocent in all that either. Yeah. Right. So I can't, I, I have no room to point any fingers at anybody. But, you know, Tony uh, had a problem, as did Freddie Prince, of yeah. course. Yeah. You know, I worked with him too. And, and and Freddie Prince was so sweet, but he, you know, people were high. Yeah. And did things they probably wouldn't normally do, and there were, you know, it, it was ego-driven for sure. Yeah. You know. And the girls were so sweet to me. Yeah. I would not want to make them mad. I'm telling you, I, th- I think they could do some uh, revenge. I don't know what they <laughs> could do. But, you know... I've got to ask you, because this is Craig, it's cult radio, or go-go, stands for cult movies, cult TV, the whole thing, which you definitely fit in well, but you were on one of the greatest cult TV classic shows, I think, because I grew up watching Saturday morning and eating cereal, and that was Electra Girl. <laughs> Electra Woman and Le- Dinah Girl. Electra Woman and Dinah Girl. I mean, tell me all about that, because Deidre Hall, you know, and, and all of them, I mean, Wow. Judy Strangus? Um, yes, that was Miss Dazzle. <laughs> Miss and, Dazzle? Uh, Miss Dazzle was my name on the show. And, and I, I actually, when I do conventions, I actually get people wanting to buy pictures 
from that show, which yeah. kind of stunned me. Like, oh, anybody even remembered that show? <laughs> um, but um, that was fun. I mean, one day on the set, I was having my period, and, the, and there was a, a, a tiger. You know, I had to work with a tiger, mm-hmm. and nobody told me that that was not a good combination oh to work God. with a wild animal and and be on your time of the month right. and I almost got attacked by that tiger that was in the scenes but um, they finally had to postpone the, the those days of shooting until after it was over. Wow. <laughs> so, Sid, Sid and Marty. That's a little bit of Hollywood behind the scenes things that you never think about. Right. Sid, Sid and Marty Croft went for the real tiger, huh? I can't believe that. Wow. Oh, yeah. It was the real deal with a trainer, a couple of trainers there. I think they had two of them on the set in case one didn't perform well. No, they, 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 they went full tilt boogie, yeah. Wow. You know, I, I can imagine like Deidre Hall coming from, you know, drama and soap operas did she kind of think that show was stupid i'm not saying stupid i love that show but i would think that that deidre hall would just be appalled well judy uh what was her last name um uh a dinah girl was judy strangus 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 exactly and uh, Judy Strangers, and I loved her. We, she was so lovely and so cute and nice and welcoming to the guests. And uh, I can't say the same with Deidre. There's a yeah. little bit of cat fighting going on there. So I think she just, um, I, she, she did it for the money too. Mm-hmm. You know, actors want to work, yeah. and she was offered the lead, and maybe she thought that. Um, it would lead to something bigger, and I guess it eventually did. I mean, you know, she's been on that soap for how long? For forever. Uh, you get on a soap opera, you're there. Her you whole 50 life. years. <laughs> I have to tell you, that's too much work for me. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I just, I've, I've done some soaps, and it's hard work, and I have to learn all those lines sometimes the night before, and I, and you know, forget it. I. I, I give me some music to yeah, play. You know what I mean. Sure. I I would much. Re- I have more fun with the music. So well, it, it, I mean, it, that way you don't get bored and everything. And no, and you can work when you want to work. I right. played, and I'm writing on a song. I I work today. I was writing on on the song today, and nobody has to give me a job or hire me to be able to go do what I do. I just go into the studio and 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 write and I, um and that's lovely i hate being dependent on a director or a producer to say um okay yeah you got the part yeah and then, yeah you know it's a it's a it's a rough business and when you're hot you're hot and then you know nobody gets to stay up there forever i right. saw so, a clip of one of your films on on facebook and you're you're going for a part and this guy, I don't know if he's the producer, director, or casting director, was a real ass and was coming on you sexually, and you cut him down. You know what movie I'm referring to as Cut? Uh, was that the movie Cut? I believe so, and, yeah. And and he, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, okay, yeah. Um, yeah, that was uh, directed by David Roundtree, and yeah. um, David Banks played the the creep that's a very scary movie by the way it got it, it was not promoted um very well uh-huh. and so a lot of people didn't see it but it has got so many nooks and crannies in it and gabrielle stone d wallace's daughter yes. plays my ingenue i play the horror film director in it uh-huh. and gabrielle stone plays my ingenue and it, it's wild that I worked with her mother I you know. Know, in the hills of eyes, <laughs> and I work with her now in a current, a fairly current movie. But um, she's a doll, and um, uh, reminds me so much of Dee. But um, uh, yeah, um, that that if you're if people are interested in seeing a very scary and. I think well written horror movie cut is really good. Well, I know you're a good actress, but it, it, the way you handled that guy, you know, I know it was scripted and this and that and everything else, but you, I think really, like if I was somebody in, in that guy's shoes, you, you know how to handle yourself. You ever had trouble being as 
pretty as you are, I mean, with the Hollywood slime, okay? You know what I'm talking about. There's a lot of that creeping around. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, having uh, first moved to New York and then moved to L.A., and I was so young when I started, you know, you can't help but develop a little edge to be self-protective, and that can carry over and help you if you're playing a hard role. I don't get very many. Occasionally, I will get cast as someone sweet, but those are few and far between. <laughs> <laughs> I mostly get the drunks and the, the edgy, you know, harder uh, types of, of roles. I just got back from Indiana doing a horror movie called Inverted, and um, I uh, play a 70s cult Charles Ma female Charles Manson. <laughs> Perfect. And, I uh, love it. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's much more fun than, I mean, don't get me wrong, if NBC calls or, or Netflix calls and says, we want you to be the sweet mom uh -huh. on this uh, uh, hour-long show, yeah, I'm, I'll, I'll be there. <laughs> you know, but in the meantime, um, I enjoy the roles I'm offered usually. It, it's a lot of fun to, to have a little edge to them. You know, occasionally I'll get somebody nice, right. but, you know, not well, that much. Well, you almost had uh, a very ingenue type of character that would have, you know, been long-lasting in your career. Because talking about different comics that you had worked with, you actually co-starred with John Ritter. You were in one of the early pilots for Three's Company. You were supposed to be Chrissy, right? Yes, yes. I, I did the pilot that sold the series. So, so 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 what happened, Suze? Why was it recast? Well, <laughs> I, I would assume that you're not the greatest Suzanne Summers fan right now. Uh, no, I'm actually not. And um, uh, but I don't have any. I mean, I have no negative thoughts about her or anything. I mean, she uh, it was, she etched out. She's a survivor, just like I am. Yeah. Right. And she etched out a career for herself. Um, I feel that. She had, you know, I, I've done a lot of theater. I've started the Amundsen Theater with Richard Chamberlain and Raymond Massey. I, you know, I, I have a strong theater art background, and I always, I never, ever approached the business for, for the fame or for the money. Right. I approached the business from this is what I love to do, and this is my art. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why I like music so much is because it's such a pure art form, or no matter what kind of music you do. Right. And with acting, you know, uh, her goal was to be famous and to be rich, and she got it, and she etched that out for herself, and she's not without talent. Uh, you know, she's fairly talented herself. So, you know, uh, John and I, um, I had just come off Welcome Back, Connor. The audience... Uh, was all over me in the taping mm -hmm. and I got all the questions that was me and Joyce DeWitt and John Ritter and all the questions were were asked of me and um, I think that he didn't like that mm -hmm. so you know whatever he he was always all along going to be the star of that show yeah. no matter who the girls were right and so it was his project. So I am very good friends to this day with his children yeah. and his ex-wife. Not uh, Amy, but the wife he had the three children with. Oh, okay. And so I'm um, his uh, and her brother sings in my band. Oh, okay. And her brother was one of Delaney's best friends. So I've had... So much. I've spent so much of my time with uh, Nancy Morgan and David Morgan, who and John Ritter's children. So it's kind of like really weird. But mm -hmm. I, um, you know, um, it, 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 Hollywood is a small town. It yeah. is. So yeah. you have to. Well, I, know, I think but, maybe it was better for you, maybe emotionally, uh, that yeah. it did happen for you because I had heard. That after Suzanne Summers left, they they brought in Terry and a few other replacements. 
I heard that Joyce and John treated the new girls pretty damn cold. You know, I don't know why, I, but well, I don't think the show ever measured up to uh, the three of them, Suzanne. Yeah. And Joyce and John, you know, um, I, I think the show fell very flat after Suzanne left, and yeah. and I will give her that. I thought she was a perfect Chrissy, and and I thought that she uh, she did a great job of it. So it, it would I have rather it been me, sure, but it wasn't, and she did a great job. Right. You know, she was spacey, and I had set that character up. Yeah. She didn't even have a last name until I was on the set. Mm -hmm. And I said, make her Snow. And so they did. And she was Chrissy Snow. Well, see, maybe you should have talked to John about his dad. His dad was old cowboy star, Tex Ritter. And you did a song. I played it tonight. I'm talking like old cowboys, okay? I'm an old guy. Love the old Saturday morning kind of cowboy things. If your daddy was Roy Rogers, <laughs> and, and let, me tell, let me tell you, okay, one of our guests was Roy Rogers Jr., and I have got to make him aware of that song. He's going to love it. I can barely hear you. Oh, I was saying that one of our guests on the show was Roy Rogers Jr., and I'm going to let oh. him know about your songs. He would love your song. If Roy Rogers was my daddy, yeah. I, 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 that was such a uh, from the gut song. I know it's funny and it's fun, but um, I, I, my father uh, was not around much, and when he was, he wasn't all that nice. And I would sit in front of the TV and and. And, and pray to God that Roy Rogers would come adopt me like oh. he adopted all those children because yeah. he seemed so nice. Yes. And that was m some of my first memories. And uh, so when I started a band, I wrote a song for him called If Roy Rogers Was My Daddy. <laughs> wow. I, I wish Roy could have heard it. I, I'm a big fan of all that stuff. We had Roy Rogers Jr. We had the daughter of Clayton Moore, the Lone Ranger. Uh, and, 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 you know, I often must have thought that, or often believed whenever I heard that song, that you must have had a liking for it. I'm glad to find out. Oh, that. I loved him. I yeah. loved him. And he had a beautiful voice. Oh, yeah. You know, uh, we shot The Hills Have Eyes in Victorville, where, he, where the museum, or close to where his museum was. Yeah. And so one day Dee Wallace and a couple of us went to the museum, <laughs> and... Um, it was very emotional for me, yeah. you know, to see Trigger stuffed and, you know, Dale's outfits. And I never was crazy about Dale, but I loved Roy. <laughs> yeah, Dale so. was always worried that Roy would stuff her and put her in the museum. But it, she, she left second, so it didn't quite work out that day. Yeah, you know, we were talking about music, and not only have we been playing your songs, uh, such as the one we just mentioned, We've been oh, playing your you. we've been playing your son's songs. I'm a big Dickies fan. <gasps> oh my god. Yes. And you know he also plays with 45 Graves. Does I, he really? I, oh my god, we had the lead singer of 45 Graves. We had, we had Dinah Cancer on. Yeah. Well, my son has been playing with um Amy. Uh that's her name, right? Mary. Mary. Right. Uh my son has been playing with Mary for years, and he and he is her uh, main guitar player. Wow! Oh. I didn't know He's that. He's her lead guitar player. Yeah. Uh huh. I I think it's weird, at least in the Dickies, that his mom, in a way, is a cult movie star. I know you've done other things and that, but you're known for all these movies, and a lot of their songs is about cult movies. I mean, has he ever talked to you about that? No, I mean we have we talk today, but we just talk about mom and son stuff. You know, <laughs> yeah. um, I, I mean we do talk about art. He plays on some of my mu on my recordings. When I'm recording, he plays with me sometimes, wow. and um, uh, I love his work. And, um, uh, and but he has three bands here. He plays with three bands here in Los Angeles, and um, and so he's always busy. I can barely ever find him at home he's either at rehearsal or recording or at the gig right. wow well we we would love to have him on sometime and, and i know his mom now so maybe that can help I don't, I don't know. <laughs> oh yeah i can push that because <laughs> he's got all the kind of i don't i don't know mary well mm -hmm. uh, but he's got all the inside scoop on dickie and on the dickies and mary and on the 45 grave yeah perfect perfect well you know we were watching your music videos and, you know, everybody knows you for the Hills Have Eyes and other things, but 
you know, there's there's somebody that, that Tiffany thinks is the most suave man she's he's, ever met. He's not okay. Here's the thing. He's not only not what you would perceive him to be. He's super intelligent, super well spoken, but he is so suave, and that's Michael Berryman. Yeah, and I mean, he's like a brother. I just talked to him two days ago. How's he doing? So, We've I, had him on the show a few times. But we haven't talked to him in a, in a little bit. Um, he's so happy. He just bought a house Good. in Gainesville, Florida, and he got, uh, it's about three acres and a two-story house, and it's for a fraction of what L.A. property yeah. would cost. Like yeah. Something like that would be millions of dollars in California, you know? And uh, he has a big pool, and, uh, you know, I think he... I I think he's very happy. I mean, he was ecstatic when I, he had, he was exhausted because they just moved in uh, this week. Mm -hmm. But I talked to him I think three days ago, and um, he was just over the moon about having moved to Florida. Well, you know, there I mean, was. You know, Go, Go ahead. ahead. I was just going to say that well, the video you did with him was the greatest love letter till the hill for the hills have eyes fans. And, and you know it was just amazing. And and how did that come about? I know I know was it you? Uh, did you not write that song with with Bramlett or? No, I wrote that song by, uh, with Ron Finn. Watch what you ask for. He's a mm -hmm. uh, a guy I over the years I've loved to write with. And um, I wrote the song, and it was getting Halloweenish time or something. Oh, perfect. And Michael had come to Michael always came to my nightclub shows yeah. you know when I, I would play in Hollywood at, at the different bars and Michael and his wife Patty always came to my shows which meant so much to me and um, and I said I think I'll make a music video and he said well I want to be in it and I said well let's make a <laughs> horror music video yes. and he said okay and and so I said let's just do it to watch what you asked for which I thought was um, probably the best one to put him in and uh, and we had a ball I I I had a guy shoot it but I directed it and uh, we did it in two days Wow and I edited it and so, you, you know it's our, perfect because I've been on dates like that I mean I, it's <laughs> <laughs> and and then uh, Brooke Lewis a asked if she could be in it because uh, I told her we were doing it, mm -hmm. and I wrote her the little part of the waitress, right. you know, the vampire waitress. Yeah. Yes. And so uh, we had a ball, the three of us. We just had so much fun with the cinematographer, uh, Christoph McWhorter. And he also uh, did a lot of the editing as well. I don't want to take all the credit for that. Chris, Chris was great. Well, you know, um, uh, getting down and dirty in, in Victorville, making the hills have eyes, you would have thought... You would have had enough of laying down on the ground. There you are laying on the ground in, in the music video. <laughs> it's hard to get too dirty for me, honey. <laughs> I'm from Texas. We're tough. <laughs> now, I have to ask you, because there's been a, a, a lot of people that have talked about this, and you read things on the Internet, and who knows if they're true or not. But I, I had heard that there was a rather interesting story from when you were filming The Hills Have Eyes, uh, with Michael because there was that that rape scene and everything was kind of tense right so so what happened there oh so it was one of the first if not the first scene that Wes decided to shoot mm -hmm. you know when you're shooting a movie you don't shoot in necessarily in sequence no right and nobody had met anyone and so, uh, yeah, we were all new on the set. And so he started with the rape scene, thanks a lot. <laughs> oh, that's it. nice, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, thanks. And he called me aside and he said, you know, Michael's a little um, nervous and uh, self-conscious about, uh, you know, doing this. And he said, you know, just maybe be nice and, and you know, uh, make him feel comfortable. Uh, you know, don't freak him out or anything. And so, <laughs> don't make and him too comfortable. I'm the one that should be freaked out. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and so, and so, I said, Michael, come here. 
and I said, when he calls action, let's, you know, don't be raving me. Let's be making out passionately. Wow. And, uh, 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 you know, like we're truly in love. And, uh, you know, just to break the ice or whatever. And he said, really? And I said, yeah, come on, come on. And so, we, you know, we're behind that little curtain, and one of the grips pulls the curtain, action, and they pull the curtain, and Michael and I are making out like two lovers, you know, in splendor in the grass, and uh, the, the, the crew, everybody went crazy. I, I don't even know if that footage still exists. Oh. You know, you couldn't erase it and go back like digital. Right. And um, so somewhere that footage exists, but after it, um, it broke the ice, and then, you know, we went straight into the scene. I, I'm pretty quick. I like to do things in a take or two. And so um, um, Wes could not have thanked me more that, that afternoon going, oh, my God, you just totally put everybody at ease. <laughs> We're ready to make a hit movie. And, and that's, you know, it, it was my idea to do it. And, yeah. and I, I think Michael should have been thanking you because, <laughs> <laughs> let me tell you, yeah. and, and to think yeah, that he, he, got, he got a, a feel, uh, uh, he got a free, a free feel. <laughs> <laughs> well, you said it, I didn't, so it's okay. But uh, he works, he works hard for his money, and let me tell you, he he may have uh, come off, and I'm sure it was part of the craft that you all learned. But he was like, "Yeehaw!" I'm sure because, <laughs> yeah, wow. He had not. He had done Cuckoo's Nest, which yeah. was a huge break for him. Mm -hmm. uh, but he had not uh, done television, and he had done. He, I think, Cuckoo's Nest was his only credit. He might have had one other, yeah. and so he was not uh, at all confident about. Um, you know, every he, he he wasn't. I mean, he was confident. That wasn't the right word, but he. He was a little shy, you know, yeah. he was very shy with me, and I could tell he was. And I know he was uncomfortable uh, wondering what I was thinking because of his physical, you know, um, uh, appearance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I've always thought he was quite handsome. I oh, yeah, no. smile. I think he's just a beautiful, Absolutely. he is the most beautiful man inside and out uh, that I've almost ever met. And I mean, he's just a beautiful soul. And you're not the only one who sees that, because we've been with Michael Berryman a lot. We hang out with him at, at things and been to the Igor Awards at Universal Studios. Women are hanging on his arm. Like like oh, he's yeah. like he's Johnny oh. Depp, yes. So <laughs> oh yeah, he's hot. He's hot. Yeah. And but he didn't think he was when he was young. But I think he's grown into. I think he's very comfortable with who he is now, and 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 he knows that that you know that was his ticket to ride. And everybody's got to have a gimmick, you yeah. know. Well. And uh, and men, if they're smart, uh, get to have a little bit longer you know, careers usually than the women do. Yeah, you know, we that's for we, sure. we kinda age out. But that's why some of my friends that have been successful over the years and aren't so much now are unhappy because they don't have another outlet in which to channel the and music creative. Is, yeah. Is one outlet. So I yeah, and I'm also working on a book that um, I have a lot of industry uh, interest in, and it's a murder mystery, and it really happened in New York. And I am I had I have written some when I was young. I wrote a couple of projects for Gloria Steinem in New York. Wow! But um, when I, and that was in '72. I worked on a show for her called Woman Alive, and then um, I haven't really. I, would, I had only written music up until about five years ago, and I started writing. I've got a treatment in the works, a horror movie in the works, and a book in the works, and I love writing. Well, you so, know, there's one thing you, you haven't mentioned that you're very known for, award-winning, and, and that is, see, uh, one of your friends, we actually had a chance to have her come over to our studio, and Tiffany took pictures of her, but they didn't turn out as well as your pictures of Christine DeVille. Oh, yes. Yeah. We're really good friends. We're really good friends. That well, was a... you know, I had a kid to raise, and so uh, acting slowed down, and things weren't um, uh, exactly the way I wanted them, and I had 
I had a dream. This is literally true. I had a dream that I was a photographer. Mm. And I woke up the next morning and got a camera. And I was making really good money at it immediately. Now, that being said, I have found some pictures of myself at five and six years old with no shirt on, running around the yard with a camera, a brownie camera. And I think there was some past life where I was a photographer or something because I didn't, I've never taken a class, I've never read a book. I simply bought the lights and started shooting, wow. and and the cameras, and I it, it just I knew how to do it. It, it. I don't know how to explain it. I think a lot of the theater experience helped me with understanding light. I think mm -hmm. the whole ticket to photography is understanding light and how it hits someone, mm -hmm. and so. Uh, I love doing it. I don't do it as I have a studio in my house, but I don't do it as much as I used to. Well, I'm I'll, really I'll tell you, on writing to to get praise from Christine DeBell. I mean, she was a beautiful Playboy model, and and she yeah. was there with all the best, and, and she did nothing but praise your work. And I saw the headshot; it's great. Oh, thank you. She is a doll. We're going to do the um, red carpet for uh, the City of Hope. Uh, in a couple of weeks on the 19th of October oh. in Hollywood and I look forward to doing that we like to go together um, to these things yeah. and you know she towers over me so she makes me look even shorter than I am but that's all right <laughs> well you know in talking about all the different things you've done I mean you've done theater you've done TV you've done film you're a writer you're a photographer you're a singer uh, you even had a one-woman show. Tell us about Swamp Cabaret. Well, Swamp Cabaret is music, basically. It is. I I was doing about, um, well, uh, maybe twelve songs uh, a night, and I would break it up with uh, many of the songs that I've written over the years. But I tied my life together through music, and um, um, and so I. I put a lot of comedy, stand-up comedy between the tunes, unless they are uh, to talk about a part of my life that was not so much fun, and uh, maybe more the painful things, uh, like losing Delaney and stuff yeah. like that. I sing Superstar in my show. Um, but I haven't done that in a while. I mean, really, one has only so much energy. And so I, uh, uh, my real focus at, at the moment is to finish my book right. and when I finish that then I probably will put the cabaret show back up because I get asked all the time to do it but I you know I think that as I get older I have to focus I, I don't want to spread myself my energy too thin and being playing a nightclub every night uh, that's work that's hard work yeah you know, and so writing, it's kind of nice because I wake up in the morning and have a little coffee and get out my computer and, yeah. and start putting the words down and, you know, I don't have to worry about, you know, uh, forgetting any lines or, you know, or, or whatever. Keeping a band together is also hard to do, you mm -hmm. know, keeping a really good, I have one of the best bands in L.A. Mm -hmm. and it's really hard to keep everybody coordinated and rehearsed and together well that's, that's incredible I, I mean definitely you've got a, a fulfilled life and I, I love to you know following you on Facebook I don't know how much you want to talk about this and it's certainly fine if you do but I love your political views because you have the soul and the courage I mean there's so many people that are in show business they're worried about saying what they think and you say what you think and I, I, I think that's great that you do you know, over, thank you. I uh, have never put um, my uh, focus on politics since the Vietnam War, yeah. mm -hmm. which was a very bad thing. And, um, and I'm writing about it in my book to some degree, and um, a little bit about it in, in, in the book. But 
I've gone through all these years of not really caring who was in too much, and I might not agree with them. I didn't focus on Republican or Democrat. I have voted for both over the years, depending on the person and who I think is a good person. Right. I think Jimmy Carter is one of the most upstanding American heroes that we ever had. And still and, is. And still is. He's and, like, what, 90 and building houses for poor people. You know? Oh, my God. Yeah. I mean, to me, a president should represent someone that I want my child to look up to and go, oh, I want to be like that. Right. Mm -hmm. And when somebody is so corrupt and so evil and out to hurt so many innocent people, I cannot sit back and just watch. So I say something. Right. Um uh, because I feel like I don't want to leave here and regret that I didn't say something. I think that the global warming issue should be freaking everyone out. And the under level of our earth is thawing. And, you know, it, it probably won't be in my, my lifetime. And I don't have grandchildren. And I'm really glad. Because I don't want, I can't imagine being worried about a grandchild that has to live in a world where they're going to have to struggle to find water yeah. and food and uh, they'll be burned up. I don't, I don't know. I mean, I do believe in science. I think that little Greta is a hero and, uh, and, and, and money. And corporate greed, what's he going to do? Take all that money with him? Right, right. He doesn't have that much time left on this earth. You know, the president of the United States is not going to live. I mean, you know, just, you know, there's a number. And he won't live forever. Right. You would think somebody that age would be trying to do good in the world. Right. But what bothers me is, is, is that he can incite his followers to, to do violence. Like, for instance, yesterday was a story published that, Bikers are threatening to descend on Washington unless Nancy Pelosi pulls the uh, impeachment proceedings. But I worry about that. I worry about blood in the streets. I worry about civil war because it's heading that way. You know, it is heading that way. Yeah. And and um, you know, if 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 there's not something, if he, I, I'm I'm afraid that if he's not voted in, that it will create havoc with those people. And I, uh, uh, I, I, I don't think he's he's going to want to step down, even if he's voted out. So I think there are going to be problems. Yeah. And um, you know, and it, it's very scary. I'm kind of glad I I'm I live in kind of a remote area of L.A. and uh, not close to Hollywood. <laughs> you know, not that close to in town Hollywood, and mm -hmm. and I feel like. Uh, a little safer by not being, I don't know. I don't know where it will go. I yeah. just hope that, I hope that everyone sees it's important to save the democracy that our forefathers fought and died for. And our, my own father, you know, fought and died for our democracy. I mean, he didn't, he didn't die in a war, but he fought in World War II. And, you know, people fought for this democracy. And, and, to give it away, throw it away like it means nothing, it is a shame. It's just a shame. And it, like I tell my friends, it's probably not going to affect me all that much. What, you know? what do you think your, your husband, if he wouldn't have passed, what do you think that he would have thought of today's uh, president? Because I get the impression and he was kind of like, you know, and I say this in a good way, like a hippie kind of guy that, that believed in peace and love and, you know, all that. Am I right? Well, we used to laugh because he was a Republican and I was a Democrat. Oh. <laughs> so, you know, we would cancel each other out. But I will say this, that he loved, uh, he, he was a very loving man and he loved children. Yeah. And had he seen the pictures of children locked in cages, I believe, I, I don't know what he would have done. I think, yeah. I think he would have been so upset about all that. Yeah. And, um... You know, it's heartbreaking to see it happen in our own country. Uh, there are other ways to do it. I mean, I, I don't... I, when I went to England, 
you know, they wanted to know how much money I was bringing and how long can I, st- how long do I plan to stay and where am I staying? So it wasn't like, oh yeah, come on in, you can live here forever. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. We can't, we can't do those that in other countries. Yeah. And so it makes me feel well. If we can't do that in other countries. Then I guess really there should be a process to gain citizenship in our country. Right. It shouldn't be a free for all, you know. But they're humane and decent ways of enforcing all of that right. and, and, and where you're not tearing families away. And, you know, I don't know. I, if we could go on and on about the politics right now. I'm just glad that <clears throat> it's going in the direction it is. And, and if they do it quickly, uh, maybe, maybe we can have a change. I don't even care if we have another Republican. I don't want Mike Pence in, but, you know, if, if, if it was a decent man who's a Republican, go for it. Well, you know, I, I just want to live my life. But the way it is, uh, the way things are, I feel like I can't sit still and say nothing. Right. Well, I, I saw a picture of you on Facebook. I was chuckling because I had a feeling what you would say. You said exactly what I thought you would say of you posing in front of the White House. You were in Washington, <laughs> and you was like, "Well, I don't think I'll be invited in." Hopefully, that day comes when. <laughs> hopefully, that day comes when you're invited in. You can perform for the president because that would be that would be cool. Oh yeah, I would love that. That you know, here's the thing. Nobody could. I, I don't know if you read the part where you know all these years, all these many many years, there's been a six and a half foot fence around the White House yeah. right. and I'd never been in front of it before well that's being torn down and he's building a 13 foot fence oh, yeah. <laughs> what's he worried about eh? <laughs> yeah <laughs> you think he might be a little worried? I don't know. I think he knows but, he knows you know Michael Berryman, so that's <laughs> and, uh, well and also maybe it was an old fence and they just decided to renovate. Yeah. I mean, who am I to figure out why? But it did it did uh it did I did what look at that, you know, and and you know, I got very um moved when I went to the Ford Theater and and sat there and and was very close to where right. Lincoln had gotten shot and and um, that it's just so educational to go to Washington D.C. and and see the history there, yeah. you know. Well, you definitely uh, saw that history, and you've got a great history in music. What what about some of uh, the other people that do your kind of music? I mean, do you know through your husband Bonnie Raitt? I mean, do you still talk to her? Or I I would assume you would have met her. I guess I have met her, uh, and she's just she's just a really cool person. Yeah. I'm not good friends with her, uh-huh. but I go hear somebody, you know, because I'm in L.A. and I live, um, uh, you know, like in an area that I'm I'm not too far from Malibu, and so there's a whole and Topanga Canyon. I live near Topanga Canyon, so there's a whole music community mm-hmm. up here, and there's some clubs that you just never know who's going to sit in. The Bone yeah, Daddies um, or Albert Lee or, you know, some of the great, great players of, um, of, the, of the rock and roll history will just drop in and walk in and get up on stage and jam. So, you know, it, it's, it's pretty amazing. And, and I feel very blessed about that. Well, people you know, that, can uh, still get your music, which is great. And you started uh, putting out uh, music uh, with, with your husband a long time ago and, and still do that to this day on a website, right? Yeah, in the 80s. I auditioned for some movie I, it, that was being directed by Brian De Palma. Oh. And it, he was looking for a rock, a girl rock band. And this is one of the first things Delaney helped me on. And, and it was before I started singing at the Palomino and some of the bars in L.A., and uh, he put together a band for me with Glendy Harden, mm. who played with Elvis. Oh, yeah. No, I know. I Let me tell you, I've been to many an Elvis concert. I saw him. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so he put Glendy Harden in my band Ooh. and a couple of other really big people. And, I, and he taught me sitting here in limbo. And um, I got up on the stage at the Whiskey A Go-Go and auditioned. Now, I didn't get the part, but I almost did. Yeah. And and that was the first taste I had of being on stage with fabulous musicians and 
in a bar, you know, in a really big club. And I, I got the bug then, and I, and, and I thought, man, forget acting. I'm going <laughs> to do music. This is fun. <laughs> and so, you know, I mean, music really is more fun. Yeah. I, I have to say. For me, it is. But I you- love to to act but most of it you know you go to the set and you're sitting there and you go in the makeup and you're waiting and waiting and waiting and finally it's your turn to go say a few lines and then you repeat that the next day but what i'm getting at like if the listeners want to get your stuff you can get that your cd like swamp cabaret and and so on uh through a special website right or yeah cd baby or itunes okay and i'm also releasing um i thought i had released it but I guess I didn't. Uh, I have a new EP out um, called Allergic to Texas. And um, <laughs> so I, love it. I, I have not formally released that yet, but I really am proud of this EP. There's five songs on it. And um, I might be able to get to that in the next couple of weeks and, and launch that. And if I do, I'll let you know. Absolutely. Yeah, no, perfect. Definitely. Perfect. I have all the CDs pr- printed. I, I take them to conventions, and some yeah. people have bought them. But um, I, I really like this new EP. So, uh, you know, the whole thing changed when I did Swamp Cabaret, put together a CD. I don't even know if people are doing CDs now. Mostly they're doing single releases. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Well, so were, everything's gone digital now, too. Yeah. Everybody just, you know, works off of iTunes and things like that. And, and you're, yeah. on, you're on Amazon Music. I know that. We found you there tonight. So. <laughs> well, and thanks, because I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. Now, you, you make Swamp, sure... Swamp Cabaret uh, is, is up there, and uh, also Watch What You Ask For is and up we, there. We, we, of, we often tell our guests they're somewhere, and they find out they're not getting paid, and they have to go sue them. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to talk to my publisher about that. There right. you go, there you uh, go. No, now, I, I do... I, I really am wild about these new songs, so I I will release that fairly soon. I you know you just I've been so busy with the book I forget yeah. to do things that need to be done and and one person can't do it all. Right. So you got I a, mean, a title for the book yet or? Um, I can't say it. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. I do have the title. <laughs> I've had the title for years. Yeah, we we have some just plagiarizing people listening to this yes, show, so yeah. you better not say it. Yeah, no, I can't say the title of the book. Yeah. Um, it, but um, but it's. I'll put it this way: it's very, very dark, and it's very, very edgy, yeah. and it's very fun. It's it's it, it. You you feel like, you know, you feel like you've been to New York in the creepiest parts of it. So you know, it's very dark. Well, we know you got some definite creepy, dark kind of movies coming out. Mm-hmm. What's some of the ones that you think are going to be good? You're looking forward to. I know you just you were making one. We were going to have you on before before we had to reschedule you, and you just come back. Uh, yeah, um, that that was a fun shoot. Uh, director Tristan Clay, and he's the, he. I did a the part in that. It's called Inverted, and then I have a new one also coming out called uh, Behind. I, I'm, I'm beneath the. Beneath the veil, beneath mm-hmm. the beneath the dark veil, or something like that. I don't know. I, I can't remember. <laughs> but, um, but it's beneath the veil. Beneath the but, black. Uh, beneath the black veil. Yeah, beneath yeah. the black veil. Yeah, and I and and I love that director, Jason Koch. He's just the coolest guy. So, yeah. I mean, I um, if I like the project, I'll go act. And I really want to direct my own, so that that it takes a lot of work. But we had a table read recently, and um, so I'm sort of going in that direction as well. Well, good. Hey, I want you you're going to ever work with Dee Wallace again? I know you work with her daughter Gabrielle. We've had them both on the show many times. We've had Dee and her psychic friends on the show too, because she has spirit guides. Oh, she does. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, we're neighbors, and so we do some signings together. She's much more famous um, and uh, likes to do those things more than I do. Um, I like a good one from time to time, but, uh, you know, 
Some people like to go out every weekend and do the conventions, it's, and that's not my cup of tea. It's hard. Um, we I, we did some of that. It's hard. I almost died. I I spent three days like at a convention with Sid Hagen at for he pass. It, I thought I was not going to make it. I'm going to drop over. It's hard work. It's hard work, and you sit there all day long, and. Um, and I love I love the fans and I yeah. love meeting the fans, yeah. but it's it's really hard work and uh, maybe a couple of times a year I like to go and because I don't pursue it at all I mean they have to ask me I never ask anybody if I mm -hmm. hey can I come to your convention so I because of that I did Comic Con in New York and that was fun um, but other than that I. Um, I prefer to, to to be in my studio, yeah. you know, uh, writing music or, or uh, writing on my book. So I don't know. I I, I guess I could do a few more, uh, but I if I could if traveling and going on the airplane to these places for three days and then c turning around and coming right back home and sitting there for three days. Ugh. Right. It's you know it's it's tough. Mm -hmm. So. Well, anyway, as as we wrap this up, I, I want to make sure we do, you know, shameless self-promotion. I know you're working on the book. I know you have this this new EP. Where can everybody go online to keep up to date on releases of these new projects whenever it comes time for them to be available to your fans? Um, well, of course, I'm uh, at Suze Lanier, S-U-Z-E-L-A-N-I-E-R on Instagram. Okay. And... Twitter and Facebook, Suze Lanier Bramlett mm -hmm. on Facebook. Perfect. But if you do Suze Lanier, you're going to find the Facebook anyway. I have a fan page and I'm just about at the 5,000. So I probably can't take on too many more personal friends, but I have a fan page on that. Yeah, that's what you got to do. You just, you know, the fan page kind of takes a spillover. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that that's what will happen, you know. I'm I'm not quite at five thousand. Uh, see, that proves you're as famous as D. Wallace. See, <laughs> when, when 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 D. Wallace was on the show, she's like, "Yeah, well, I've done a lot of crappy movies. I'm nobody." I'm like, "Well, you did E.T. You know, if you were in E.T., that's a pretty big movie with Steven Spielberg." But she didn't think she was a big deal. But obviously, you're you're doing okay. You reached that limit almost. So. <laughs> I guess. Yeah, I mean, no, I, I, you know, in Hollywood, there's so many big deal people, you know, like Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie. So when you think about your own career compared to them, you kind of go, eh, you know, well, I had, I had that run. And now I just enjoy each thing that comes. I enjoy each day I wake up and go, oh, I feel like I'm going to write today or whatever. And, um, you know, fame is a tough game. Yeah. And if, you, if, if that's what you're looking for, you're going to be... You, you're going to be a miserable human being at some point. It, it'll give you know, it, it'll give you like all these diseases and rot your brain. That's just like me. I get into controversy sometimes, and I speak my mind like you. And I've wound up blocking a lot of people on Facebook. And then I try to get a celebrity like like a celebrity like you. And I talk to a publicist. They're like, "Well, how many people are following you on Facebook?" And I'm thinking, "Gee, I banned a bunch of people. I should have done." <laughs> No, no. I'm very careful. You know, when it says friends I, and they're asking, I'm mostly, um, I get a lot of music people. Yeah. You know, we're, we're a tight-knit group. And so a lot of musicians from London and Japan and uh, even Molly, uh, I have friends that I know that are, you know, they live in those places. And we've had music encounters before. So I have a lot of great music uh, friends on my Facebook. If I don't know somebody or I don't know the connection or I don't know somebody they know, then I don't usually, you know, hit accept. Yeah. But so I, oh, I could hit be way over 4,000 now if I let every, <laughs> I mean, I've got a, I have a whole peop, list of people I need to delete and, and not to be mean. I just, I don't know them. Yeah. And I, and, and I don't, I don't know if they're hackers or not hackers or people that want to get into my political opinions or whatever, fight with me. I, I block people all the time that, you know, 
uh, don't uh, like my viewpoint. And yeah, so, well, I, you know, they, we don't need to be friends. So, no, I, I appreciate know. that you didn't look at how many people follow me because I've just blocked a lot of people. And, and some people just, you're, you're nobody if you don't have that little star meter and it's all measured by social media and it's a bunch of crap. You know, it really is. Seriously. Well, you know, sometimes I, I look at my IMDb and I go, oh, this week, oh, I'm good this week. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then I'll look at it and it'll be, you know, 20,000 or 23,000 and I'll go, ugh, I'm nobody. Yeah. And, you know, you can't worry about stuff like that. Yeah. You know, it's it's like, it's, it's nothing. At the end of the day, what kind of meaning did it have in my life? Right. You know, it doesn't mean anything. Uh, it means something just for the you know the rush of the moment and then you move on to the next thing and forget about it i mean some people are obsessed with their imdb score and they buy people to to you know they buy those star the you know they buy the points and stuff yeah. i just find that ridiculous it is it is well yeah. like, like i said you got so many more facets i mean it's not only the acting but the music career and and all that music became part of your life and 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 you met you know your soulmate through music and you, you got oh, a yeah. son that's in music and 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 we do need to have mom write the son a note so he can appear on call radio <laughs> that, would be, that would be good well you know what if you'll send me a text requesting it his name is dylan thomas okay. then i will just forward it to him and Tell him he's got to do it. Okay. That's, that's all I can if, if mom says you got to do it, you got to do what mom says. You know, that's, that's, yeah. that's, that's, that's good. Okay. Well, you're, you're a lovely lady. I'm so glad we finally got you on. I can understand Thank why everybody you. thinks you're so sweet because you, you are a sweetheart. I'm, I'm really glad you didn't get caught up in that thing in the mall. Didn't you go to the mall and there was a shooting in the mall or something? At be you were at Best Buy? Oh, yeah, I, I kind of got into that, but I was on the periphery of it, and I drove away. Oh, I'm lucky you drove. I'm glad you didn't. Man, it's scary nowadays, you know? Yeah, it is. It, it, it really is. I figure, you know, I don't, I yeah, that wouldn't be a good way to exit, but, you know, I don't know. Maybe when they do something about the guns. Yeah. <laughs> You know, let me tell you from somebody who was a wise man that, that I got to meet, uh, Vincent Price. Vincent Price, the great horror actor. And I said, when are you going to do another horror movie? And he said, I may not ever do another horror movie because it's a lot scarier what's going on in the headlines. And that plays today, you know? Well, I agree. And I tell people, yeah. I'm not going to do a slasher movie. I'm, You know, I don't care what you offer me. I will do... I did I did one that came close to it and I hoped that it had humor in it and then my part involved nothing like that. I mean mm -hmm. I played just a very simple part. Yeah. Uh but I will not condone the slasher stuff and if if a horror movie does not have an some humor in it, a message in it, comedy in it or a tongue in cheek thing, you know, I mean I'll be covered in blood, that's fine. But I do it with humor and and if i don't have the humor in it i i they, and and it's gonna maybe make somebody do go do something bad yeah. right. you know that that's a there's a problem and i knew vincent price too okay and Great. i loved him yeah. and i love the fact that he was conscientious of how far you can take it yeah. Yeah. you know the hills have eyes was pretty edgy but i didn't have to do you know, I guess it was, everybody says, ooh, how could you do that movie back then? Nobody was doing movies like that back then. I, I still felt like it was kind of a cult humor thing, right. you know? It was, yeah. definitely. Yeah. And, 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 you know, the, the whole audition thing where you just had to cry, we were talking to another actress from Hills Have Eyes, and I said, what was the audition process for Wes Craven? She just said they had to run. They just said, run. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got um, at least to show a little Janice emotion. Yeah. yeah, for sure. <laughs> he had to run, and yeah, uh, yeah. He just they just kind of offered me that part, so I did a little improv with Wes, and it was offered on the spot. So perfect. Uh, but yeah, and you know what? I love that you guys are are so into. Uh, doing what you're doing and 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 introducing us i mean what a service you do for us to expand our own fan base 
And um, if anybody wants to uh, hit me up on Instagram or Twitter or whatever, I respond back. So perfect, perfect. Unless Thank you're you. unless you're a jerk, and then you'll block them like <laughs> I do. They, oh yeah, they have to be polite. They have to be polite. Yeah, right. Because you right, know something, right. don't mess with Texas, and that That's includes right. you. Okay. That's right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Suze, I want to thank you so much for spending so much time with us this evening. We will definitely keep in touch. And uh, when your book is ready to come out, then we would love to have you come back on to promote it. And the CD. Oh, my God. It's, I'm so excited about that part. And I'd love to. I'd love to. Perfect. Perfect. Well, I'd uh, love to do it again. I'll, I, I swear to God, I'll think of other things to say. <laughs> well, we'll have to bring you up here in our mountain studio sometime where Trump and all his cronies can't find you. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> I'm there. <laughs> All right, thank you again, and I hope you have a great rest of your weekend. Okay, you too, All and right. thank you for the interview. Absolutely. Bye-bye. All right, bye-bye. Okay, bye.